See, I want to see something that looks amazing. So welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. And today we are going to do another smoker meal. This one is very easy, very few ingredients, and I promise you it tastes amazing. So before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and admit, typically we do this recipe on chicken. There's no reason it should not work on a pork loin. We're actually gonna slice this up and put it on some sandwiches. I'll show the chicken recipe here coming up before long. Next time we decide to cook it. When we first tasted this that a friend brought to us uh, a year or two ago, nobody could figure out what this seasoning was. And it's only three ingredients, but there's one ingredient in there that people are just not used to, and you just can't put your, well, I guess, tongue on it. So for starters, we just go ahead and pick up one of these already pre-seasoned Smithfield pork loins. You don't even have to get the seasoned one. A plain one will work just fine for this, but the extra seasonings are just gonna make this taste better. This one has a pretty significant fat cap on it and some loose pieces. I'm gonna trim that off, then we'll get started. And to start off with, just leave the meat right there in the pan, leave you an open side, so make sure you have a pan big enough for that. And we'll start off with some brown sugar. I'm not measuring here, we do everything pretty much to sight. Okay, I got brown sugar spread all out there. We're gonna hit it with some garlic powder. We do this in every single meal. And here is the secret ingredient that nobody can ever figure out. Chili powder, trust the process on this. The chili powder gives this such a unique flavor. Not measuring, we're just gonna say a couple uh, tablespoons. Get this mixed all up. I really don't think you can do too much of any of this stuff. I'm actually gonna do just a little bit more chili powder. So now just take your pork loin, roll it in it. There ain't but so much that's gonna stick to it. You can't really go wrong here, trust me on this. And keep in mind, the majority of your barbecue rubs that you buy from the store anyways, well guess what? They have a lot of brown sugar that's on your typical barbecue rub. All right, so next we're gonna cut open a pack of thick cut bacon. Don't be using none of that thin stuff here. Nobody likes it. Okay, now that we have our bacon laid out, we'll take our pork loin. Look how awesome that looks now that it's done set up. And it's very simple process. You see where we're heading here. Wrap the bacon over. And then we'll stick some toothpicks in this. Okay, same process. I just put more brown sugar, a lot of chili powder, and some garlic. Mix this up, get the clumps out of it, and just roll the outside in this. Trust me, people, trust me. So now you can put a little more seasoning on top if you want, but it's already infused with so much flavor right here. We're gonna let this sit, go outside, and get the smoker ready. All right, let's get the cover off the old Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800. By the way, the Masterbuilt cover, I know a lot of people are, are watching because y'all have this grill. If you haven't got this cover, get it. Very well built, love this cover. What's up, buddy? Now, I apologize, it's gonna be hard to see me because, well, it's so bright behind me, it's washing the camera out. But with that said, I typically smoke on this side of the porch to allow the smoke to escape and not choke us out in the outdoor kitchen while we're over there enjoying ourselves. So I'm not gonna go over much about this grill, <clears throat> but what I am gonna let you know is I have Masterbuilt Lump Charcoal in here with a mixture of some apple wood. I believe it was Kingsford apple wood, a bag of that that I got. It's just all different size chunks. Got it mixed all throughout the hopper. I'm finding, thanks to a viewer and friend of ours that recommended apple wood, it gives such a sweet flavor to foods. Now with that said, I love smoking with cherry and on certain types of foods, I'll substitute uh, pecan wood, pecan, however you pronounce it, and some oak, which we get right here off of the property. So let me stick a little fire starter in here, get this going. And by the way, a lot of people have asked me, please do recipes and cook on this, since y'all seen that I have one, because well, you have one or you're thinking about getting one. And a lot of people have talked to me about some of the mods and other things that are available for these grills. 
exciting news. Stay tuned. I will have a review video coming up here before long on a lot of the aftermarket stainless mods that are built for this thing. All right, I'm gonna let this fire starter get the charcoal going and then I'm gonna bump the grill on, run it at 225. See y'all back in just a minute. All right, so I've got the smoker at 225. I'm gonna open it on up here and we're gonna put this on the center rack. I tend to avoid putting very fatty stuff wrapped in bacon on the bottom rack because, well, ultimately you wind up starting grease or fat fires as this drips down. Some of the mods I was just telling you about are going to eliminate that. So if I put this on, the center rack. Now I can put this pan on the bottom rack after I go get all this sugar and stuff out of there. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is use one of the master built probes here. And we're gonna keep a close eye on the internal temperature of this pork loin. We, didn't, we don't really care about time Honestly, too, people get too caught up in time. It's temperature that we really care about. Now here's the thing about a pork loin like this. Well, it's just not a very fatty cut of meat. You would think that it is being pork. Pork loins are one of the drier pieces of meat and you can easily ruin them. I see a lot of people say cook pork to around 165 internally for a safe temperature. And I agree with that. Most porks, that's what I cook to it. However, a lean pork loin, 145 internal is where you want it to be. So what I'm gonna do here is run this at 225 for however long it takes for the internal temperature to get up to say 130 degrees. 130, 135 is what I'm looking for. Then I'm gonna run the grill on up to around 350 plus degrees, get those bottom racks nice and hot, pull that down, roll it around and actually sear and crisp up that bacon. So I'm gonna keep an eye on my temperature throughout this whole process of me crisping the bacon up at that point. And I'm gonna check it with a little instant read thermometer. Once we hit around 140 degrees, maybe slightly over internally, pull this off, always let your meat rest. And you're gonna notice it's gonna to continue to rise. We should hit what would be about 145 internally. That is the temperature that you're looking for for pork loin. I know that may sound a bit low and a bit rare, trust me. I do not like undercooked food, but whenever it comes to a pork loin, nobody wants it as dry as can be. That's the one piece of meat that I break the 165 degree rule on pork. All right, so it's been exactly two hours. I've just left this at 225 and we just hit 135 degrees internally. All right, so I ran the grill up to 350, let it sit there for a few minutes. I've got my bottom cast iron grates nice and hot. And what I'm gonna do now is just put this on there, close it, and turn it every few minutes just to kind of crisp that bacon up. And I'm gonna watch my temp with my thermometer. All right, so I just checked the timer, two hours and 15 minutes. We run it all the way up for two hours at 225 if you're curious about time. But again, we're far more concerned with temperature. And then we did the last 10 to 15 minutes at a higher temp, just making sure the bacon gets a little more done. See, I want to see something that looks amazing. I know we're losing light out here fast, but oh my goodness. Check that out. All right, so I've let this rest for quite a while. We're going to pull this out and slice it. Oh, I'm so excited. This smells, this smells amazing. So let's just cut this right down in the middle because we're actually going to take slices off of this and make some killer sandwiches but I really wanna look on the inside and see. I'm not expecting a huge smoke ring here for the simple fact that, well, you know, we had it wrapped in bacon and everything else going on, but there's gotta be some flavor here. So we'll leave that bacon off. I'll show you what the pork looks like here. As you can see it mushing out around my fingers, there is still Plenty of juice in the meat. Let's try the flavor. That's good, y'all. Right, let's try a little piece of the bacon because I know that's going to be so good. Get some of them juices in the pan. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I don't know how to explain the flavor of chili mixed with brown sugar. That sweetness, that little bit of tang, 
And then of course you got this smoky flavor going on everywhere in this. It makes one of the best combinations of flavors. I'm telling you, I love this, I absolutely love this. And when you do it on the chicken, it is so stinking good. I just really don't know how to describe the flavor. I can promise you, this is such a simple ingredient here, but if you'll do it, you've got to try it to understand the flavors just work so well together. All right, I'm gonna put this back in the pan and wait till it's time to have supper. And I'll show you all a picture here at the end. What we're gonna do, Tiffany made a homemade pasta salad that's gonna go with this. We're gonna take some thin slices, just like you've seen me do, and she's gonna make some amazing sandwiches out of this. Uh, with that said, you could eat it just like this. Cut your big chunks, put it in your plate, throw some sides with it. It would be amazing. Try this one. So simple, so few ingredients. Let me know how you like it. The flavors are, are absolutely perfect. The sweet, the sugar, the smoke, the saltiness of the bacon. You don't have to go crazy with all these different marinades and blends and everything else. This just works. It absolutely does. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. All right, so take a look at this. This is Tiffany's version of a Cuban sandwich. She's got cheese on there, ham, those thin slices of that pork, some bacon, and some of my homemade pickles. And then uh, she'll take this and actually put it on the stove on a hot plate, press it down, melt everything together, toast the buns. It is so stinking good. So there's the sandwich, etc. They've been pressed. And there's her homemade pasta salad right there. This meal was so good. We're still bragging about it. We're going to have to redo this video and show you how to make those sandwiches. Oh my goodness, they were so good. And that pasta salad that she makes right there is my favorite pasta salad I've ever had in my life. So good. Mm -hmm.